Whenever someone asks me for my favorite genre of books, I don't know how to tell them that it's books by Asian authors because it seems kind of pretentious as if I'm boycotting authors from other backgrounds, but in reality, I just read a lot of books by Asian authors. Hi, I'm Alexandra and I'm a self-proclaimed expert on books by Asian authors simply because one, I'm a former book blogger slash reviewer and two, I am the co-founder and co-host of Subtle Asian Book Club, which is a book club spotlighting Asian storytellers and books by Asian authors. I cannot believe this is SABC or Subtle Asian Book Club's third year! Jokes aside, I think my favorite genre is just fiction. That leads to my first category of recommendations, specifically contemporary fiction. Disclaimer, a lot of books on this entire list are very sad, but I promise you they're very, very good. First up, we have The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali. This is one of my favorite books of all time. It is mostly set in the 1950s of Tehran, Iran, and the backdrop is a lot of political turmoil, but the heart of it is a soft romance. Soft, bittersweet romance. There's so much angst and emotion in this book. The main leads of this book meet at a stationery shop in their city, and that is how they fall in love. But unfortunately, due to the political upheaval at the time, they are separated the day before they're about to get married. It's really, really, really good, and I would highly recommend this to literally everyone, but especially those who want to, like, feel emotions. Next up is The Mountain Sing by Mleng Phan Phun Mai. It is so good! <laughs> I love multi-generational books and The Mountain Sing is one of those books that really pull at your heartstrings for the Tran family set in the backdrop of the Vietnam War. I don't know, whenever I read multi-generational books, it's kind of like you feel with every single generation and by the end, I usually feel most seen with like the granddaughter or grand kid and then i think about the first main character which is usually like the grandma or like the great grandma and then i feel like so much for my personal family i don't know how to pitch this aside from the fact that it's often compared to pachinko don't want to like pit two two multi-generational asian books next to each other simply on the fact that they are multi-generational and asian i don't want to say like it's a vietnamese version of pachinko because it's not if you want a reference point it is a easy way to summarize it it does not do it justice though speaking of pachinko my next book recommendation is pachinko by Min Jin Lee. It is super popular, well-loved, well-rated, deserves the hype it gets. I first read Pachinko like, I don't know, like five years ago or so, and it made me realize that I love multi-generational books and I didn't know this before. It was one of the first books that I read that was like contemporary fiction versus before I was reading a lot of young adults. It follows a multi-generational family set in the backdrop of Korea during the Korea War. It's set in in both Korea and Japan and it talks a lot about like turmoil in Korea because of the Japanese occupation and it's just really sad and really good. I think I've read it at least like three or four times. It hits different! It's so good. My next book is The Hannah Artist by Alka Joshi. I feel like this entire video is just me saying, oh my gosh, this is so good, but literally this is so good. <laughs> this is set in the 1950s of Jaipur, India, and it is about sisterhood and motherhood and class structures and love. Yeah, it's about love. And it's about like working your way out of hardships and what that means socially and as a society. It also tackles the themes of like what it means to dream or what your dreams mean over the span of like a long period of time because I feel like when you're young you're like oh my gosh I want to do this and it would be my dream to I don't know travel the world or like do this occupation and like what that means after a span of like 20 years if that dream still stands or like if if your dreams change and how like life changes and it's just really good the next book is against the loveless world by susan abel hawa this book is a little bit more sad than the last like 
a lot more sad, but also I think it's recommended reading, especially right now. It follows a Palestinian refugee. The main character is born in the 70s and it's told backwards in that like, I'm pretty sure the book starts with her already in prison and then it kind of like goes back with how she got there and it's mostly just about her life but then it's also really really beautiful and really sad definitely recommended reading next book is a little bit more positive and it's called before the coffee gets cold by toshikazu kawaguchi it's very popular on tiktok right now so you might have seen it this is a translated book from japanese it's about a coffee shop in japan where you can time travel either to the past or to the future it's quite short so if you're looking for like a short book that is a little bit easier to read i would recommend this it's i think a collection of three or four short stories and it follows a couple of characters that visit the coffee shop to travel in time or they either like work in the coffee shop or somehow related to this cafe next up I finally have a physical book to do this announcement but babble by rf kuang if you watched my last video on asian book recommendations i'm like pretty pretty sure that i recommended the poppy war which is by the same author but now she has finished the poppy war series and came out with a adult fiction novel babble follows a cast of characters that are students of color at oxford studying translation and it tackles themes of colonialism history and the ethics of translation translation. It is very dark academia. Talks about student protests. I'm just gonna leave it at that and you should read it. Next, I have On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. I feel like a fake because <laughs> I'm recommending this book, but I actually haven't finished it. I started the audiobook a long time ago and I got halfway through and then I just never finished it. I don't think that has anything to do with the book. I'm pretty sure I was borrowing it from the library and then the library returned it because it was due. The online library, that's why it automatically returned. Anyway. I never finished it, but halfway through, I really enjoyed it. I really, really, really like Ocean Vuong's writing. It's so beautiful. And whenever I watch any of his interviews or like any video of him speaking, I'm like, I wish I could be as articulate as you. So I wanted to recommend it. And my last two books in this category are books that I actually haven't read, but I've heard really good things. And so I wanted to include them. Also disclaimer, I don't really read summaries of books before I read them so I cannot provide like a proper summary. The first is Disorientation by Elaine Chia Cho. This was recommended to me by my friend Jenanine aka The Story Ain't Over. All I really know is that it is a debut novel. The cover is very fun. The author is Taiwanese American and I think it's something related to college. Oh yeah, the main character is a PhD student according to the first sentence of the summary on Goodreads. And that's all I really want to know. And the last book in this category is Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I honestly do not know anything about this book aside from the fact that it's really good because every single person I know who's read this was like, this was amazing. Oh, I had no idea. This is also about students because the main character seems to be a Harvard student. I know nothing about this book except for the fact that it's really good and I really want to read it. So I'm going to recommend it to you. <laughs> Next, I have some fantasy books because I would say fantasy is my second favorite genre. I don't have as many fantasy books, but it's fine. First up on my list is The Greenbow Saga by Fonda Lee. If you want to read fantasy by an Asian author, The Greenbow Saga is the way to go. I don't know how to properly summarize this, but it's about family, blood feuds, politics, magic, and kung fu. It's often pitched or compared to The Godfather. It's just so good. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. The next two are fantasy but young adults. The first one is Iron Widow by Shiran J. Zhao. I read this in like a day. Granted, uh, I like read it on a flight, so I had some time. I really like complicated slash messy main characters and the main character for this one is so like angry and unhinged. I am obsessed. There are also polyamorous relationships, which I enjoyed. It's kind of like sci-fi 
ish because there are like mecha aliens and like giant robots. The next book is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sulin Tan. I was really surprised that I enjoyed it so much, mostly because I had such a long reading experience. Like usually if it takes me months to finish a book, I end up not liking it as much simply because I don't remember the beginning by the time I finish it or I don't remember what I felt in the beginning by the time I finished it. But this book took me like a couple months to read because I read it like while I was in school. It like stuck with me even even weeks or months later. So I take that as a good sign. Follows a Chinese legend, which is the legend of Chang'e, who is a moon goddess in I think the original legend, and it's about her daughter. Fantasy and mythology elements, there's some romance. I feel like this is a very like sweeping and beautiful book that like is very immersive in its world. The last book in my fantasy category is also a book that I haven't read, but is a book that is highly recommended by literally every single person I know who has read this, but it is Kaikei by Vishnavi Patel. Also don't know much about this book aside from the fact that it is a fantasy mythology retelling and that it's really good. Okay, so my next category is not even really a category because I only have like one book, but it is romance and my only recommendation is any Helen Huang's books. There aren't that many on this list mostly because I don't really read romance, but Helen Huang's romance books are literally so good that I would read every single one of them. <laughs> even if I don't really like romance. The first book that I read of hers is The Kiss Quotient, which is also, I think, her debut, or like the first one in like her The Kiss Quotient series. I binged it in literally a night. I think it started at 7 p.m. And I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna like start this, read the first chapter and like go to sleep. And then I ended up finishing the entire book in literally the same night. And I messed up my sleep schedule for it, but you know what, it was so worth it. It was so good. And and then I also read The Bride Test as well as The Heart Principle, which I think are the second in the series. There's also disability representation in it and big fans. Next up, we have young adult slash middle grade books. And the first in this category is Four Treasures of the Sky by Jenny Ting Hui Zhang. I documented this reading experience in one of my reading blogs and it destroyed me. Before you read this book, I would highly, highly recommend checking all the trigger warnings because there are a lot of them. I think this is the saddest book that I have ever read. And people often say like their saddest book or the saddest book is A Little Life. And I think this is worse than A Little Life because this is kind of based on a true story. It's a fictional story, but it's based off of events during I think late 1800s America gold rush and about the Chinese Exclusion Act and Chinese Americans at that time. There is murder, there is rape, there is kidnapping, there's gore. If you're able to read it, I would highly recommend because I feel like it's one of those books where I finished it and I was like, this feels like required reading because as someone who's American and born and raised in America, I feel really disappointed at myself and the education system for not educating more people about the extreme hardships of Asians in America like pre-1950s. The amount of like racism, hate crime, and discrimination in this country is so awful and embarrassing. It feels disrespectful to not know those stories. So that's a really, really sad one. If the next one is a little bit more positive, it is As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Kato. I read this recently and it is one of my favorites. It's so good. I actually listened to the audiobook and it was so good that I went out and bought a physical copy because I wanted it so bad. It's also sad in the sense that like the situation is heartbreaking, mostly because the main characters are Syrian refugees and it's talking about the political climate right now in Syria. But the story itself is really hopeful and inspiring because it's kind of a romance. Like there are, there are romantic elements, but there's also like strong family. It's so inspiring, so hopeful, so bittersweet. I love it so much. I think everyone should read this. I think there's trigger warning for PTSD and 
like war. Actually, I should have mentioned this earlier, but check the trigger warnings for every single one of these books. Next up I have We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. Similarly to Four Treasures of the Sky, this is a Japanese American historical novel that surrounds Japanese internment in America. And I say similarly only because it's along the lines of American erasure of discrimination and hate crimes. I think it follows a cast of over 10? 7? A big number of characters who are children or teenagers who are forced to go to Japanese internment camps. It hits all the feels. I love this so much. It's also like, in my opinion, recommended required reading. You have to read it. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Next up, I have A Wish in the Dark by Christina Sunterwart. This is a middle grade novel that is a Thai retelling. I believe. It's like a little bit fantasy and some fiction. It follows a character who was born and raised in a prison, manages to escape, and there is a girl who I think works for the prison or like has family like related to security and she is on the hunt for him. It tackles themes of being hopeful and finding light at the end of the tunnel. Next up, I would recommend Patron Saints of Nothing by Brandy Rebay. This is a story about a Filipino American who is trying to uncover the history of his cousin's murder. If you are Asian diaspora and you're struggling with your culture's identity, then you may relate to the main character of this book because he travels back to the Philippines and kind of like rediscovers like what is going on with his family in the Philippines and like what it means for him to be like American and like his privilege related to that. It's also really relevant right now because it tackles the war on drugs that is currently happening in the Philippines or has happened for the past few decades. Next up we have Fall Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. I think it is no secret how much I love Chloe's books. This is a spin-off duology from her original duology set in the secret Shanghai world, These Violent Delights and Our Violent Ends. I love those books, but personally, I loved Foul Lady Fortune even more, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. I had such a great time. I loved all the characters. I think I liked Foul Lady Fortune more simply because I liked Orion Hong more than Roma, who was the main male character in These Violent Delights. Timeline wise, this is set after the original duology, so there will be spoilers for the end of the original duology. So if you decide to start with Foul Lady Fortune, then know that you will be spoiled for the ending of the first duology. So if you haven't read either, I would recommend starting with the first duology, but I wanted to recommend Foul Lady Fortune specifically because that is like my personal favorite of all of Chloe's books that are out right now. Very exciting! It's so good. My next recommendation is once upon an eve it is a collection of short stories and so there are a lot of authors it's a collection of short stories all focusing around eid which is a muslim holiday it made me cry because it's like so heartfelt it's like it made me happy cry and so if you're looking for like something like happy and sweet and like positive then i would highly recommend once upon an eve because it's just like mm, it feels like a hug second to last book in my ya section is darius the great is not okay by a deep Karam. This is so good. It is about teen angst and identity. Specifically, the main character is American and Iranian, but he does not feel Iranian enough or like Persian enough. There's also gay romance. It also talks about depression and suicide, I'm pretty sure. You should double check the trigger warnings. I think it's really interesting because especially in Asian culture, I feel like mental health is often put on the back burner, but this book does a really good job of tackling the topics of depression as well as like identity and culture and like all the emotions that come with being a teenager and it does a really really good job with it and it's so beautiful. My last book is another book that I'm reading right now but I barely started so I can't even say like oh, I'm reading it right now but it's also Subtle Asian Book Club's January book of the month for 2023 which is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. Very 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 exciting. Since I literally just started barely a few pages 
is in. I cannot tell you what it's about, but I know it's won a lot of awards. I know a lot of people really love it. Okay, it's set in the 19... 50s of San Francisco's Chinatown and the main character is Chinese and I think it's queer. I think lesbian? Very very exciting. That's all I really know and that's all you really need to know. That's a lot of books but I have even more books. I think the next category that feels fitting are graphic novels. The first graphic novel recommendation I have is The Best We Could Do by T. Boy. This is also very sad. The art is very beautiful. Um, it is um, about Vietnamese immigration slash refugees. This is an autobiography slash a memoir about the author's personal journey or like their family's personal journey of immigrating to America from Vietnam. It's very heart-wrenching. The next is called Mooncakes by Susan Walker and Wendy Shu. This one's a little bit more fun. It is about a teen witch who runs into her childhood crush who is a werewolf and it's just very cute and very fun and it has a lot of mooncakes. Okay, moving on to nonfiction. The first nonfiction book rec is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. Super, super popular, won a lot of awards. I think I enjoyed it more after I realized how much I love Michelle Zahner or also known as Japanese Breakfasts music. I like listened to her in concert and then I was like, wait, I love her music. She seems like such a cool person. I'm obsessed. But this was after I had read her book. My initial thoughts after I read her book was like like oh this was like a really sad book about mother-daughter relationships and grief and death and cancer the whole book feels really personal and feels like a personal eulogy to her mom but I think anyone who has like hard relationships with their mom or is like close like I feel like you could have a hard relationship but also be close with your mom at the same time but they could also be separate but either of those two if you relate to that then you will probably feel the feelings of Michelle Zahner's personal experience. It's good. I love it and I love Japanese breakfast. Okay, the next book I have is called Asian American Dreams by Helen Jia. This is a really good book if you are interested in Asian American history and culture. It is specific to the Asian American experience but also unpacks a lot of different ethnic groups within Asian America. It's a very interesting historical read and would recommend. The next book is called Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong. This I think is like a collection of essays about like Asian identity for the author herself. Since she is Korean American, it does talk a little bit more about specifically the Korean American experience, but I do think there are some things in the book that are universal to all Asian Americans or Asian diaspora or a lot of different people regardless of ethnic background. This next book is one that I'm reading right now, so I am again cheating by like not actually finishing it but still recommending it. It is The Collected Schizophrenia by Esme Weijun Wong. I'm like, really? I just started this. <laughs> it is a collection of essays about the author's experience with schizophrenia. I feel like there aren't many books about mental health and disabilities that are also by Asian authors and so this is like a good dive into like mental illness and Asian identity. I think it is more so about mental illness however because the author is Asian the fact that she's Asian inevitably comes into her experiences simply because like that is part of your identity and it usually almost always I would say like affects your thought processes and experiences. If you're looking for a mental health focused book by an Asian author, I would recommend. Okay, my last category. I'm almost done. Essays and short stories. First up, we have Too Much and Not the Mood by Durga Chu Bose. I read this so many years ago and I haven't reread it in a long time, but I distinctly remember listening to a podcast interview with Durga Chubas and I was like, you are so good at articulating and forming sentences that I bought her book immediately just so I could read her words. And honestly, like this book is that experience in the form of a book. If you ask me what this is about, I don't know what to tell you. It almost feels like a trail of thoughts like literally it literally feels like a trail of thoughts like within each story i don't even know if there is like a coherent story but they all kind of like 
tie together at the end really beautifully and it just it feels like a stream of consciousness but i really really liked it like i really enjoyed it that to this day like i don't know five years later after i read this book i'm still constantly recommending it over and over and over again it's one of those books where i don't really know what it's about but it's really stuck with me then i have the paper menagerie and other stories by ken Liu. oh my gosh i had i had the honor of interviewing ken Liu for a subtle asian book club and that interview to this day like still lives with me continues to like impress me and inspire me simply because ken Liu is a genius he's so smart his brain like <laughs> I don't know how to describe this, but I just kept thinking about the interview as I went on with my day. That's how I felt about the interview, and that's also how I felt about almost every single story in The Paper Menagerie and other stories. After I finished the short stories, I was like, I want to go back and like reread all of them all over again. We've reached the last book on this list. It is Sour Heart by Jenny Zhang. This is a collection of fictional stories that kind of intertwine. Kind of like not really, but kind of. I think like one of the characters is mentioned in another story. But anyway, I would read the trigger warnings for this. I haven't read this book in a while, so I can't remember exactly what they were. It is like kind of hard to read. There might be rape. There's definitely poverty. Poverty is a big theme throughout this collection. The main characters or like the main theme throughout this collection is that it's all told from the perspective of young girls who are recent immigrants. It is like set in Flushing, New York, as well as Shanghai, China, as well as the Cultural Revolution in China in the 1960s. It's kind of dark, but also really intimate and also really well done. I'm pretty sure I also binged this in a day via audiobook. And then right after binging it, I immediately went and bought the paperback because I was like, this is one of those books where I want to reread it and highlight everything. So yeah, I still have this copy. I still haven't read it. Maybe this year I will reread it and go and highlight it. But I just remember I really enjoyed it. I love it. It's so good. Anyway, those are all the books on my recommendation list. There are many, many, many books by Asian authors out there in the world that you could read. And I hope you diversify your bookshelf. Let me know in the comments which book that you're most excited to read or if you have a Asian book recommendation for me. Reminder slash plug to join Subtle Asian Book Club if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching. Sending all of the love.